Hello. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Come and join us in praying the rosary tonight. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first luminous mystery is the baptism of Christ. We offer this mystery for healing. We pray for individuals and families who are suffering. We pray for God's mighty hand to ease the suffering of those who are sick right now, those who are in the hospital fighting for their lives, to those who are taking care of the sick, the doctors, the nurses, and their family members who are taking care of them. May you grant them healing and protection. Mama Mary, cover them with your mantle of love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The second luminous mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. We offer this mystery for the comfort of those individuals and families who lost their loved ones. Lord, may you grant them peace, healing, and strength to their family members. Grant them protection and comfort, O Lord. Those who are distressed due to this crisis, those who are anxious and depressed, those whose mental health are afflicted, grant them peace, O Lord. We know that you are the Prince of Peace, the God who heals, and we trust in you, Mama Mary. Health of the sick, embrace all who are emotionally and physically ill, that they may return to good health under your tender care. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, as blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the coming of the kingdom of God. We offer this mystery for the souls of those who have lost their battles with COVID-19. Welcome them into your kingdom, O Lord. Grant them peace and heavenly rest. We also pray for their families and loved ones. May they find comfort and consolation in you as they grieve. Mama Mary, embrace them with your loving arms and lead them closer to your son, Jesus. As a special prayer petition, we lift up to you the soul of our dearly beloved Father Michael Laguardia. May our hearts that are grieving for him be comforted and may find joy in trusting your will, O Lord, at these trying times. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The third luminous mystery is the Transfiguration. We offer this mystery for our country, the Philippine government, and to all leaders of the world's nation. Grant them the wisdom, patience, and will to guide and protect their people. O Lord, grant them a humble heart to serve their people, especially those who are in weakness. We ask, O Lord, especially in this coming election, that you clarify their intentions and guide their decisions. Mama Mary, 
we ask for your intercession to guide our leaders so that we will follow your son in loving and serving the congregation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead, the, lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Eucharist. We offer this mystery for all the churches all over the world and for our spiritual family, the Feast Bay Area District. May we persevere to proclaim the gospel. We also pray for our feast builders, leaders, and co-servants that we continue to minister and serve, especially to those who are poor in spirit. We can nurture our faith and ignite the fire in our hearts. Dear Lord, we also pray for your servants, Brother Caloy Carceliar, Father Paolo Asper, Asper Father Albert Garum, and our spiritual advisor, Father Bob McConaughey. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of our priests, servants, and Biblia Conia attendees. Mama Mary, mother of the eternal priest, we ask for your intercession to bless their labors, to comfort them in times of their needs, and to keep them within the shelter of your son's sacred heart. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, your rise of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, Show to us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. We now pray the litany of the blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, pray for us. Mother of Mercy, pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace, pray for us. Mother of Hope, pray for us. Mother Most Pure, pray for us. Mother Most Chaste, pray for us. Mother inviolate, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray.
pray for us. Mother most amiable, pray for us. Mother most admirable, pray for us. Mother of good counsel, pray for us. Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mother of our Savior, pray for us. Virgin most prudent, pray for us. Virgin most venerable, pray for us. Virgin most renowned, pray for us. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of justice, pray for us. Seat of wisdom, Cause of our joy, pray for us. Spiritual vessel, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. Singular vessel of devotion, pray for us. Mystical rose, pray for us. Tower of David, pray for us. Tower of ivory, pray for us. House of gold, pray for us. Ark of the covenant, pray for us. Gate of heaven, Pray for us. Morning star. Pray for us. Health of the sick. Pray for us. Refuge of sinners. Pray for us. Solace of migrants. Pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us, Queen of Prophets. Pray for us, Queen of Apostles. Pray for us, Queen of Martyrs. Pray for us, Queen of Confessors. Pray for us, Queen of Virgins. Pray for us, Queen of All Saints. Pray for us, Queen Conceived Without Original Sin. Pray for us, Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Queen of the family. Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, O God, His only begotten Son, by His death, by His life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal, eter, eternal salvation. Grant. We pray that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We now pray the litany of trust. From the belief that I have to earn your love. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that I am unlovable. Deliver me, Jesus. From the false security that I have what it takes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that trusting you will leave me more destitute. Deliver me, Jesus. From all suspicion of your words and promises. Deliver me, Jesus. From the rebellion against childlike dependency on you. Deliver me, Jesus. From refusals and reluctances in accepting your will. Deliver me, Jesus. From anxiety about the future. Deliver me, Jesus. From resentment or excessive preoccupation with the past. Deliver me, Jesus. From restless self-seeking in the present moment. Deliver me, Jesus. From disbelief in your love and presence. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being asked to give more than I have. Deliver me, Jesus, from the belief that my life has no meaning or worth. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of what love demands. Deliver me, Jesus, from discouragement. 
Deliver me, Jesus. That you are continually holding me, sustaining me, loving me. Jesus, I trust in you. That your love goes deeper than my sins and failings and transforms me. Jesus, I trust in you. That not knowing what tomorrow brings is an invitation to lean on you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are with me in my suffering. Jesus, I trust in you. That my suffering united to your own will bear fruit in this life and the next. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will not leave me orphan, that you are present in your church. Jesus, I trust in you. That your plan is better than anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. That you always hear me and your goodness always respond to me. Jesus, I trust in you. That you have the grace of the forgiveness and the forgive others. Jesus, I trust in you. That you give me all the strength I need for what is us. Jesus, I trust in you. That my life is a gift. Jesus, I trust in you. You will teach me to trust you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are my Lord and my Father. Jesus, I trust in you. I am your beloved Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed, especially Father Michael Aguarja, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. All right. Thank you for praying with us tonight, brothers and sisters. Please be ready with your pen, notebook, and Bible because Father Michael Aguarja's Bibliaconia will be back after a short break. See you in a bit. It's Biblia Konia. Will, will we say it again? Biblia Konia. Okay, so the way to pronounce the Greek is to pronounce every syllable. Okay, so um, it's not actually Biblia Konia, but Biblia Konia. It's a coined term of two Greek terms. One is Biblia. Biblia comes from the Greek Biblion, okay, which is book, singular. When you put it in the plural, it becomes Biblia. It's now books as a collection. Okay, so Biblia is a collection of books. It's many books. And konia comes from the word diakonia. See, you don't pronounce it that jaconia. <laughs> Gagalit yung mga Greeks kapag narinig na yan. But you say diakonia. Ano yung diakonia? Diakonia is service. Um, deacons are meant to serve. That's the ministry of a deacon, to serve. So, diakonia is, diakonia is service. So, put the two words together. You have, what is the word? Okay. The Bible is God's language of love. It's like you want to hear beautiful messages of love from God. What do you read? You read the Bible. Gusto mo nga pick up lines ni Lord? Read the Bible. Gusto mo na mga lines that would comfort you during desolation, that would give you strength during moments of weakness, that would give you comfort when you are distressed? Read the Bible. All right. So this is God's language of love. The Word of God is not something. The Word of God is someone.
Hi, good evening, brothers and sisters. Hello, Sorry good for evening. that uh, short, short delay, Diva Vina. Uh, we just yeah. had to make some uh, preparations on this side because this evening is special. Diva Vina, special because of course. may mga magbabalik. The comeback of two of uh, our uh, dashing gentlemen here in other Michael Aguardas with Nikonia. But anything, uh, anyway, brothers and sisters, again, good evening and I hope everyone is safe and uh, well tonight. How are you, Vina? Kamusta ka? I'm doing great. I'm feeling awesome tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about you, Dean? Ako, ako pala si Dean. Hindi pa yan na naman ang lagi kong masakit, Dean. Hindi ako napapakalala. Friends, my name is Dean, <laughs> your friend, uh, your servant here at the Feast uh, at Home, uh, Feast Mall of Asia, serving you uh, dito sa Father Michael Aguardas, Pugneto niya. So, Vina, uh, you were asking, kamusta ako? Um, ito, excited because as what I've mentioned earlier, um, We have, uh, you know, hindi, hindi siya special guest kasi nagbabalik sila. Na, na, Exciting na night. Pamilya, uh, dito sa Father Michael Aguardas ng Bleconi. And uh, very much, we are all very much excited uh, on what he will be sharing. Yung kanyang kwento, stories niya nung time na uh, medyo nag-enjoy siya. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, I believe that we're going to enjoy it because of itong uh, uh, friend natin. Ito. Ikaw, Vina, how are you? How's your week so far? I'm doing great. Actually, this is mm-hmm. a rest Rest day, rest. no? Resting agree, with the Lord, yeah. Perfect. And I'm so excited with with what God has in store for us tonight. <laughs> That's true, Vina. So, Vina, for the benefit of our uh, friends this evening, and for those, especially, no, na first time na katutok ngayon dito sa ating uh, Father Michael Aguardas Kibletonia, what should they expect? What will we be doing tonight? All right. Welcome, brothers and sisters, again here at Father Michael Laguardia's Biblia Cania, our weekly formation every Thursday. Mm-hmm. So, Biblia Cania is weekly Thursday formation of Feast Bay Area District. And every Thursday, we gather and we deep dive into the Word of God with the help, of course, of our spiritual advisor, friend, priest, and a brother that later on you will get Hi. to know them. All right. And every Thursday night, also, we will be talking about yung. We'll re- we will read the first reading, second reading, gospel, yeah. and the most awaited part is the big message no? later know. on. Also, we will have this question and answer portion. All right. And on that note, Vina, no, sabi ng isa natin nagbabalik this evening, they want the questions to be uh, insane. They want the questions to be crazy. So friends, wow. if I were you, send in those questions, anything about uh, these topics, no, about faith, about religion, about the Catholic Church, about the sacraments, about the sins, about your life groups, about the ministry, anything about those topics, brothers and sisters, make sure they're crazy, make sure they're insane. Uh, our uh, respondents, <laughs> right. we men this evening are very much eager and excited to take in those questions. Coming from your friends. So again, Vina, how will they That's send your why questions? we encourage everyone to send your questions here in the live mm-hmm. comment section of Facebook Correct. Live. And if you're shy, you can uh, also personally send to us your questions. Mm-hmm. But of course, mas maganda kung dito sa live, right? Para exactly. nakikita ng brothers and sisters natin. Mm-hmm. Para naman also, sila, di ba? Para yes, nila. Para so... But anyway, brothers and sisters, again, we are excited to get those questions coming from you, especially sa mga alam natin, Vina, di ba yung mga hindi nakakatulog? Makakatulog this evening. Uh, Mama, Dean. Unless they, uh, you know, bring <laughs> out their, question. those questions. Ask those questions and, you know, uh, give them uh, the sense of um, success upon receiving yes. the answer to the question that has been bothering them for quite some time. All right, Dina? Yeah, naman. You need to tag your friends and share right. this stream to them. Because if the Lord is blessing you through this Biblia, Konya, of course, this blessing is also meant to be shared. <laughs> Definitely, Vina. And on that note, Vina, allow me also to give a special shout-out, special good evening to our regular viewers in the all of the Facebook pages of the Feast at Home Bay Area District. So hello to Feast PICCAM Facebook uh, likers and viewers right now. Also, Feast P-I-C-C-E-M, Feast O-P-M, Feast Manila, Feast Ermita, Light of Jesus, and of course, the Feast Mall of Asia Singles and Feast Mall of Asia. And hello also to our viewers right now sa ating official Feast Mall of Asia YouTube account. So sabi nga ni Vina, please share the stream and tag your friends to inform them that Father Michael Aguardias of Biblia Colia is live na live this Thursday evening. All right? Right, Dean. Alright, Vina. So, Vina, simulan na natin itong ating gabi. 
I know everybody is excited to start this uh, uh, special ministry that we have been doing for more than a year now. So, Vina, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so may I introduce our brother, our builder, Brother Diday Labatan, to lead us into prayer. And give us opening message as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Vina. Hi, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. And it's nice that we have gathered here. I pray that we do not give up in meeting one another. This is uh, the way that the Lord puts us together as a community, and a community is a group of people following the Lord, communing, communicating, being all there with one another. And <clears throat> I was thinking about what I'll share with you tonight, and I, I read the, my practice just to share it to you is I always read the daily readings, and if you have your phone, you can download the Feast app, and that's where I find the daily readings through the companion and then I read the, the Didache and the Sabbath, and uh, I'll, I, I get some time to reflect. And uh, I'd like to read to you uh, the gospel for today, and I cannot forget my realization and my reflection today. So here it is from, from, from Matthew 14, verse 22 to 33. Listen to the details, okay? After the crowd had eaten their fill, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat <clears throat> and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came for, toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. And at once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Wonderful gospel. Can you type it in the chat group? If you listened, I hope you did. Can you message in the chat group? What is the word or what is a phrase that stuck to you as we read through the Bible verse, as we read through the gospel today? And I was, I was rereading it again. This morning, and I thought about Bibliacony at night, and I was saying, Lord, I still don't have a message. Speak to me, speak to me. And in my silence, I reread it again. I've read this Bible verse for so many times in so many years. But today, I got something new. And it was an aha moment to me. And if I could digest it with you, it just said, I got to see the dynamics or the timeline. It says, after the crowd had eaten their fill, Jesus, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. Meaning, it was coming from somewhere else. The story was a continuation of the crowd eaten, had eaten their fill. Meaning, this, this, was, this was a miracle where, where Jesus was with the crowd and he was able to nourish them. It came from a miracle. And on what Jesus did, I, I, I followed what Jesus did. What would Jesus do? And he made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him and proceed them to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. Meaning he was able to perform the miracles and he let the disciples go. He dismissed the crowd. And this is where I got my message today. And I hope you get this too. After doing so, 
he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. And that was my message today. I need to be alone. <laughs> I need to dismiss everyone else. I, I needed to, to let go of things, people, thoughts, things to do, action items. Because for the past few weeks and months, I have been so busy. And I have been through in and out of helping people, helping myself, this and that, taking care of family, traveling uh, the past few weeks. And last week, I just came from, from, from a, a big project in our work. And, and I got back. And, and here's the grind again. And then there's going to be a, you know, the biggest conference of the year, feast conference. And, and I had to do this. I have to prepare that. And, and today... God spoke to me. I have heard this Bible passage, read through this Bible passage so many times before. But that's, I think, how the word of God is alive. It nourishes us differently every single time. The word of God is so rich. And I'm thankful that we have Biblia Pania, but we get to digest, that we get to Learn the exegesis, the, the, the context, the, the our Catholic faith based on our based on the scriptures as well and, and our traditions. And this is a this is a nice time. And I realized that it's okay to go up on a mountain. And not the mountains of high experiences, meaning there's high energy, there are so much fulfilled projects that you are on top of, the, of, of things, very looking powerful, so many people looking at you. The mountain experience of Jesus was different. He, went, he dismissed everything and everyone. He went to the mountain and he prayed. And by the evening, he was there alone. Just a brotherly reminder to everybody. Alone time is a powerful time. Because actually, when you deliberately dismiss everything and everyone, and you come to a mountain experience alone, you are actually going to recognize you're not there alone. That's when you realize there is God, even in the nothingness, even in the aloneness, even the when there are no crowds cheering, where there are no people following you. And I am reminded today, I need that time with the Lord. I need that time to be alone. Because miracle, alone time, miracle. From, from glory to glory. The glorious thing of feeding people, the miracle, there was an alone time. And then there's gonna also another glorious thing with the disciples on the boat. For me, from glory to glory, the two <laughs> is the quiet time. The two is the time out time. Just a brotherly reminder to me and to you. It's okay to be alone with the Lord. Go to a mountain Literally, maybe, or maybe just go into a quiet place and be there and pray. I could imagine we can have a conversation with the Lord in our alone time, but I could also imagine that Jesus was just there communing with God, the Father, and just being one, probably even saying nothing, just enjoying nature. And, 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 and that includes our body. That includes our thoughts. And I love that reminder today. And I cannot help but share that to you. Go to a mountain experience just like Jesus did. And sometimes you find yourself alone. And some people 
have that hashtag FOMO, fear of missing out, that that thinking that I cannot be alone, I cannot stand being alone. I'm afraid to be alone. But from the experience of Jesus in our gospel today, it's not a place of fear. It becomes a place of faith. I wish that for everybody. Maybe tonight is that night when you're watching this Bibliophonia alone, wherever you are in the world, if it's a morning, it's an afternoon, or if it's on a replay, maybe you're watching this alone. And this is your reminder that it's okay. And it's okay to have time with the Lord. Listen in, reflect, recharge, renew. And I believe that in the presence of the Lord, we will never come out of it unchanged. We will be always changed and changed and transformed in the presence of the Lord. From one glorious event to another glorious event. The connection is aloneness, nothingness. And it's a very powerful thing too. And if you're feeling alone, remember, God is there. If you're feeling exhausted, go for a time out. Reflect. Be alone. And that's where God will find you. You know what I realized? One last thing. I was, I'm going in and out of things, in and out of business, messages, projects. And then I got my time earlier when I just really sat down and Lord, speak to me. <laughs> That's where God found me. <laughs> and that's where I find God again. In the nothingness. In silence. May God find you today in our Biblia Kornina. May you find God again. You don't have to do anything glorious or majestic. Just go. Be quiet. Sit in a comfortable position or go into a prayer position and just commune with God. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, if it is you who's leading us to a mountain experience just like you did, here we are. We're listening in. We're tuning in with you. We're communing with you. Thank you for reminding us that from glory to glory, it is you who empowers us, who helps us recharge, recover, and renew. We love to be in your presence. We love you, Lord. We cherish this time. And we pray for all our community members, our family members, for strength, for hope, for peace, for provision, for more faith that allays our fears. We thank you, God. We love you. We will serve you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everybody. Enjoy Biblia Kaniya tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brother Didoy, for your wonderful opening message and prayer to us. Thank you, Vina. Thank you, Dee. God bless everyone. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Vina, napansin mo. Iba yung energy ni Brother Didoy tonight, no? Iba yeah. yung aura niya, di ba? So, tamang ka naman, if, if you really, you know, make time or spend your adult time with the Lord, that's the effect, di ba? You're being energized. Diba? Uh, diba? Mararamdaman mo yung vibe uh, eh. Yeah. Uh, Oo. Oh, naka, alam mo, parang, diba usually sabi natin, um, we get, we only get energized when we have time to rest. Yeah. But if you're taking that time to rest in the presence of the Lord, ayun, alive na alive. Alive na alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, it's it's something I also look, but all of us are looking forward to being there uh, during vacation. Diba? It's a time for us to rest. But if we're going to include the Lord in that time of rest, you know, mm-hmm. imagine diba, what could it do to your, to your body, to your soul, to your spirit. Diba? It not only gives you physical energy, it also, I, I believe, uh, uh, energizes your spirit. Diba? And it yes. exudes. Diba? It, it, it becomes seen naturally hindi pinet na na energy na bibigay ng uh, that kind of rest so mapahinga tayo mga kaibigan <laughs> yeah tsaka nakuha ko din dun kay brother Dida you know? God mm-hmm. meets you as is where is correct during mm-hmm. your alone time yes I remember the song as you find me Marion. as you find me I just forgot who sang that but it's a it's a gospel song that we used to sing at the feast alright Vina alright so uh, yeah um Mina uh, na, ang nagbabalik, the comeback. Nagbabalik, yeah. Nagbabalik siya. So, friends, we missed this guy. He was away for about two months, no? But during that time, I believe he was, he was able to recharge also uh, with his family. And he also did a lot of other stuff, which um, I think he will, uh, you know, talk about later on. So, friends, let's welcome back here in our Father Michael Aguardas, Kibnekonia family, Father Bruce himself. And so welcome back again, Father Albert Garong, SSP. Hello, Father. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Hey, Kamusta? How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm okay. <laughs> okay naman. No? <laughs> uh, eh, ang ko, Father, we thought Father Albert are uh, English only, please. Pero, well, um, I, I think, Father Albert, before we ask you know, to, you know, to, to, to do your thing, by exegesis, maybe it would be good, it would be nice, Father Albert, for you to share a little bit of uh, you know, something that you did in the last two months. Go okay lang naman po, Father Albert. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I went to the U.S. primarily for okay. for one month lang uh, yeah. to be with my family. Uh, first, because we, my father passed away, so we had to, you know, be together and do, you know, what we do. And um, after that, nung about a week, it was also vacation time, so with time to recharge. And then wow. a week before I was set to go home from to the Philippines, I got a call from our congregation's house in New York. Uh, apparently, and sa California ako, and then in New York, apparently uh, they needed some help. They called the Philippines to ask if any priest is available to help out for a few months, and then the Philippine superior here said, Nanjan na yung isa, one of our priests is already there in the States. So just get him to fly over to New York. So I ended up staying for an extra month in New York, uh, in our house there in Staten Island. I got to meet the feast in New York virtually. Wow. Uh, so um, yeah, everywhere you go, if you're part of the feast, you there's home. No? And it's really true. No? I, I, I had fun with them as well. I, I did work for our congregation. Uh, the in in media work there so ayon and, and it was totally unexpected and then I finally got home I just got out of quarantine after last Tuesday and now I'm <laughs> back at Biblia Ponia. Wow, Father Albert, we truly miss you here in uh, our uh, family, Father Michael mm-hmm. Aguardas Biblia Ponia, and we're looking forward to you know to, to what you will be sharing this evening and. Uh, just you, uh, having you here back in our, our family, uh, Father Albert, is already uh, a wonderful gift, if I may say. Right, Vina? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so by the way, again, Father, Father, yeah, Father Albert again, Vina, meet Vina, Vina Hi, Father Vina. Albert. Nice. <laughs> so, ating bagong kapamilya uh, here in uh, Bibniagonia. So, Father Albert, uh, the virtual stage is yours. Bless us this evening. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dean and Vina. So uh, before I do present, uh, allow me to sh- shout out to Father Paolo Asprer, SSP, who took over uh, while I was away. So uh, thank you very much. And he, he will be back sometime, no? So don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> and uh, allow me to share my screen. Na parang ayaw mag-share ng aking screen. I don't know what's happening. But, hmm. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure to work it out. Pero sige, ayan. So I hope you can see my screen now. Um, is it? Uh, yes, Father Albert, you can see it now. All right. Sige. So uh, welcome again to Biblia Konia and we'll now do the exegesis part of our um, uh, gathering. Uh, we are looking forward to the Solemnity of Christ the King this Sunday, November 21, 2021. And uh, it's the cycle B of the liturgical cycle. And actually our readings for uh, this Sunday are quite short. It's a huge solemnity. The Christ the King marks the end of the liturgical year. After that, we will start again with Advent. So it's a big solemnity, a big feast in the church. And we have our readings from Daniel uh, chapter 7, 13 to 14, Psalm 93, Revelations 1, 5 to 8, and from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 18, verses 33b to 37. So now we can now listen to the gospel reading uh, to be taken to be read by D. Thank you, Father. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Dean. Um, just a heads up. Um, I know that in Biblia Konia, we recommend that you use uh, the New Revised Standard Version. But this time, I decided to lift the readings directly from the lectionary readings. So the translation might be a little bit different, but I chose to do that so that you will hear in Biblia Konia exactly what you will hear on Sunday Mass. So just some preliminary notes before we proceed with the gospel passage. Uh, first, many scholars agree that this uh, nar narration of the trial of Jesus from John chapter 18 to 28 to John chapter 19 verse 16 is the most dramatic account of the trial of Jesus. Thus, it is actually better to read it as a whole when you are studying it. Because for Sunday, we only get a small portion of it, particularly the first encounter between uh, Pilate and Jesus. So what happened before the passage that Dean just read? So Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane by the temple soldiers. And then he was sent to the high priest and to, to the temple. And then after facing them, he was sent to Pilate's headquarters to be judged. Um, they, will send, they sent him to Pilate because only uh, Pilate could render capital punishment. But when, Pilate, uh, when Jesus arrives there, Pilate asks why he's being involved in the matter. Uh, he, he asked what offense Jesus committed and then replies that it should just be a Jewish matter. But um, again, the, the temple soldiers who brought Jesus justify that they bring him, bring him to Pilate because only Pilate can render capital punishment, which is what they seek for Jesus' case. So now we are in the part where we are at the gospel. So verse 33. Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? So Pilate, accepting that uh, he has to hear the case of Jesus, summons Jesus into his headquarters, but Jesus' arresters do not follow inside. That's why it's only the two of them talking. Because for the Jews, if they enter the place of the Romans, it, they, will render, they will be rendered unclean. So this is Pilate's first 
look at Jesus. So let us go a little bit into the character of Pilate. Who is this guy? No, he is a procreator. A procreator in the Roman system of governance is one who administers or governs over a Roman province or territory, but with limited powers. He has full military and judicial oversight. That's why he is the one presiding over the case of Jesus. He is also in charge of gathering taxes, but he has no authority to dictate its cost. You know? And as Roman authority, he has the eus gladii or the right of the sword. Therefore, he is the only one who can render the death sentence or capital punishment. The Jews do not, under the Jews, under the Roman Empire, do not have that power. So that is the role of the procreator. He also earns a salary from the treasury, but is strictly prohibited from receiving gifts or bribes. So there's an interesting power dynamic between the people and their procreator. Because unlike an emperor or a king, the people has no choice. They just have to accept that that is their leader. But when it comes to a procreator, procreator who is assigned by the emperor of Rome, they, the people can report to the emperor when they have grievances against their procreator. And the emperor can act on that. He can replace the procreator. He can uh, admonish him and so on. So they have this very unique power dynamic. And that's important in the case of why Jesus is brought to Pilate and Pilate's reaction to Jesus. So Pontius Pilate himself, the procreator that Jesus faces, assumed the position in 26 AD. And so he has been in the job for what? About seven years or so when the case of Jesus presents itself to him. And we have no known history of Pilate. We don't know who he is. But we can presume, according to scholars, that he has, he must be a good uh, governor, a good administrator, because Palestine is typically a troublesome area. Because the Jews, many of them, especially the radical sectors of Jewish society, they do not accept that they are under Rome because they are the people of God. So there will be unrest here and there. And then there is also the sensibilities of the Jewish people and so on. So you have to be a good administrator to be assigned there. Nevertheless, the Jews under Pontius Pilate were quite unhappy with him. So much that they always threatened to report Pilate to the emperor. Why? Why is that? According to scholars, there are two main reasons. Pilate was very disrespectful or dismissive of Jewish beliefs. Previous procurators would be sensitive to Jewish sensibilities so that peace will be maintained, but not Pilate. He doesn't care about it. He is also especially cruel against any kind of insurrection or disorder, regardless of scope. So whenever there are like big uh, revolts, Big or small, he would be very violent in crushing it. He would be known to send out um, soldiers in plain clothing so that they can uh, really catch those who are causing unrest and they will be punished or killed on the spot. So that's why Pilate, in a way, was forced to hear the trial of Jesus, even if he wasn't inclined to do so, because he knew he was very unpopular among his constituents. So in a, in a very real way, the Jewish leaders had an ace against him. We can even consider it like political blackmail that they are saying, okay, you have to do this for us because you know, you're on the edge. <laughs> you are in danger of being um, replaced or being admonished by the emperor if we report you again. So... That is why Pilate's hands were like forced or tied to do this. So we go back to the verse 33. Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? Again, this is their first physical encounter between Pilate and Jesus. And it was not at all what Pilate expected. Pilate has dealt with many revolutionaries who claim to be king, who challenged Rome's authority, and they tend to fit the same mold. Pilate asks, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Because the man before him was completely different to the others and completely against what he expected. So the title King of the Jews is a reference to how Jesus' words and actions so far in his ministry has pointed to him as the Messiah that the Jewish people are expecting. He never said that he is King of the Jews. He never claimed that. But because the people were expect were associating him with this messianic figure, he became this, uh, in their mind, what people thought of Jesus was the king. Because to them, a Messiah is a political leader, a king, not only uh, a religious leader or a savior, but really a savior who would um, rout the political and, and military enemies of the Jewish people. So that's why the term Pilate used was, you, are you what people say is the king of the Jews? So verse 34, Jesus answered, do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Jesus clarifies the question instead of answering it directly. Because there are two possible answers according to Jesus. If he is saying this on his own, it means Pilate is asking for himself, which means he meant the question literally. Are you a king? Are you therefore challenging my king? So the answer to that is no. But if he means king of the Jews based on what the Jews are saying about him, if then Pilate is asking about what the Jews are saying about him, which means he is a religious leader, then therefore the answer is yes. It's a slight but very important distinction, and it informs how Pilate reacts to Jesus. Why so? Because this question from Jesus, from this supposed you know, revolutionary man, who must have surprised Pilate, it may have told him that this man is not your typical you know, rabble rouser. He is mentally astute. Hindi siya troublemaker lang o nagahanap lang ng gulo. But he, he knows what he's doing, at least based on that first response. And this picks his curiosity all the more about Jesus. I mean, hmm, this guy is different. He's actually smart. <laughs> and um, verse 35, so Pilate answered um, quite sarcastically, I am not a Jew. Am I your own? Am I your own nation? And the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? A strong reaction uh, that shows Pilate's negative regard for Jewish society and beliefs. He sees himself as well above the concerns and the superstitions of his constituents because that's how he related to Jewish faith. It was just like superstition, not unlike how we. We act to superstition, like um, if a black cat crosses your path, you will be unlucky. So we just dismiss that. Pilate has a similar regard to Jewish beliefs. It's just, you know, just folk, <laughs> folklore and superstition. And the question, what have you done, is a question that Pilate asks Jesus, but Jesus ignores that. Because we will see after this that his reply instead answers an unspoken concern of Pilate. So once again, Jesus seems to be um, ignoring the questions of Pilate, but also addressing uh, the more pressing matters at hand that are unspoken. So verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews, but as it is, my kingdom is not here. So with this response, again, ignoring the first question, the prior question of Pilate, Jesus zeroes in on Pilate's concern. He, he immediately clarifies, my kingdom is not of this world. I have a kingdom. But it is not a political rival because it is not in any map that you know of. It is not in this world. You will not find it. So you have no reason to be worried about me, even if I do have a kingdom. And then to support this claim, he offers a practical, logical argument to prove his point. 
if I am a political king, then the soldiers of my kingdom would be fighting to defend me or to rescue me from you. But no, there is no, uh, viol- there is no military action in response to my being captured. So therefore, I do not have a kingdom that will be a threat to the Roman Empire, which is your concern, Pilate, right? It's like what, that's what Jesus is saying. That's the point of all of this, right? To make sure that I am not a threat to your king. So even without saying anything, even without, even if Pilate did not express that concern, Jesus was already able to zero in on that. So another meaning of not of this world is that it's not of this earth. Therefore, my kingdom, contrast to earth, is of heaven. It implies, therefore, that it is above the Roman Empire in power and glory. Also, it is governed by higher values. I, for example, love and righteousness. So verse 37. So Pilate said to him, then you are a king. Jesus answers, you say I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world. To testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate clarifies again, are you a rival king? Some scholars would also say that this repetition of the question is also sarcastic. Again, stemming from Pilate's general outlook of Judaism, as if to say, you are a king, (laughs) you are a Jewish king, (laughs) but you look like that. So he was kind of mocking Jesus. And then Jesus uses the word you say. Remember, this is again implying how Jesus seems to be the one um, in control of this conversation. He throughout this conversation, Jesus is totally in control. He is the one who is um, uh, directing the flow of the conversation. There is no sense. You don't get a sense that Jesus was on trial. He exhibits only calm confidence. If anything, Pilate is the one who seems to be on edge. It, parang siya yung unsure, parang siya yung hindi sigurado sa kanyang sarili before this, um, king, this person who claims to be king. For this I was born implies that Jesus was born a king, that he was born for a definite purpose. These words are proof, according to one scholar, that it's proof that of the incarnation of the Son of God, that Jesus is implying that he is not an ordinary human being, but a divine person, it's the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. So the truth, throughout the trial, we, it's a very interesting theme, not just in this passage, but throughout uh, the Gospel of John. But in this passage, the, the tri- throughout this trial, Jesus never lies. He doesn't deny anything. His control over the situation implies he holds the truth as if he alone understands what's actually happening, as if he knows a secret that nobody else sees. That's why he can be so um, calm and controlled because it seems that he's the only one who understands what's actually going on in all of this craziness. So, all in all, what can we say about this brief passage from the gospel? Jesus accepted the truth that all this is according to God's plan. So, he was able to surrender himself fully to the process. Uh, Jesus was calm. Jesus was collected because he was in a state of surrender. He knew that everything is going on according to God's plan. And therefore, he doesn't have to worry about anything, but he can just trust the process. And this faithful surrender to the Father is precisely why he exudes so much power and control. If you could notice throughout the entire passion narrative, Jesus is being handed over to different people to the temple soldiers, and then to the temple, the high priest, and then to Herod, the king of the Jews. 
and then to Pilate, and then to the Roman soldiers, and then to the angry mob. He is just a, a willful subject to all these handing over of earth, earthly powers. And we see then how with every step, the more he surrendered, the more he allowed himself to be handed over again and again, all the more is his glory revealed until he reaches the final step, his throne, the cross, for his coronation as king, which will be achieved by his martyrdom. This king will be crowned by giving himself up, by sacrificing himself, which is totally against how we understand power here on earth. Jesus gains power. Jesus gains his kingship through surrender. Jesus' divinity and majesty shine brighter the more he was beaten and destroyed by our standards. Not by divine standards, but by our standards. His royalty stems from a loving sacrifice and the faithful surrender to the one true ruler. I, I think that's beautiful. And we will expand this further on what this means when we listen to the other readings in for Sunday. So we now listen to the first reading. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dean. So we have only two verses for our first reading from the prophet Daniel. So uh, verse 13, so we hear the term son of man. This is an Aramaic phrase. This is the native language of Jesus. One who is like a human being. So it implies a messianic figure who is like a human being, not merely like a full human, a Messiah in the line of King David, but the human head of restored humanity. This is in relation to what Jesus is going to do, what salvation means in the plan of God. Salvation is to restore humanity to what? So we are being restored. We are being given back what we lost because of sin, our lost inheritance. Seen in the light of Jesus, this restoration begins with his coming and is happening now and in the end of time will be completed. So this restoration is a process and it began, its final phase began with Jesus and it is now in the process of being completed until the end of time. That will mark the full restoration of our lost inheritance, our original dignity as humans, as the humans created in the image and likeness of God. So the next verse um, in this prophecy of the Jews supports, we find why they think that the Messiah is a political Messiah. Because, you know, they have this idea that um, this son of man will be, will have dominion over everything. That all nations, every language will be under him. That's where they get this notion that this Messiah is a political Messiah. And that is not wrong. But what they get is, what they misunderstand is how that happens. The Jews were right that the, that the establishment of the kingdom of God will end all other kingdoms. All of us will be united into one kingdom of God. But again, this will not happen by means of power play or by a power grab. 
but by the example of Jesus through surrender. So we now listen to the second reading. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be, be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have this reading from the last book of the Bible, Revelation, and it expands how we understand the kingship of Jesus and what that means for us. What, he, what is he trying to achieve? Was that just for the sake of Israel, for the people of God, or is it for something far, far bigger and wider? So we go through it verse by verse. So in the verse first, verse 5, we hear three titles for Jesus. First is faithful witness. John's gospel always presented Jesus as the witness to the truth of God. But what is a witness? A witness is someone who has first-hand knowledge. You did not receive what you know through some other form or, or means, but you experienced it yourself. That's the only way you can be called a, wit a witness. Therefore, Jesus can be called a witness because he has a uniquely first-hand image of God. As the second person of the Trinity, he has that intimate knowledge of God that only he knows. And he is faithful to proclaiming that, and that is part of his ministry on earth. A second title is that he is firstborn of the dead. Firstborn or proto tokos. Tokos is son, proto means prior or first. So there are two meanings to this term. First meaning is someone who is literally firstborn. Jesus is called the firstborn because he is the first to show us what a restored humanity looks like. That's why after Jesus' resurrection, he was a different kind of being. He is not just a resuscitated human being. He didn't just return. He, he was not just a corpse that was, that was brought back to life like Lazarus, but he is something entirely different. He was transformed. That's why the disciples saw him in different places, miles and miles apart. That's why he was able to walk through walls and just disappear and appear just as easily because it is a different kind of being. And that is what a restored humanity looks like and Jesus is the first to show us what that is a second meaning is one who in as the firstborn in our families the firstborn is the one who inherits the father's glory and honor the firstborn is the one expected to continue the legacy of the father and he inherits the glory and honor so that is also another meaning for firstborn of the dead the part of the dead implies that the Jesus is Lord, not just of those who are alive on earth now, but every single human being that existed, living and dead. Every soul, he is the king of all of them, of all of us. No? And he is the third uh, title is that he is the ruler of the kings of earth. Again, this is the connect to Daniel's prophecy. No, Jesus is the one who will rule over everything so much that all other kingdoms will crumble. All other nations will be uh, united into one under one king. Jesus is there and then being implied as the Messiah that the Jews awaits, that has been awaiting. But again, he won this kingship not by a power grab, not by a political play, but by surrendering all power 
and sacrificing his will completely to the will of the Father. That is very, very important. Verse 6, so we ask, it gives us the reason. Why did Jesus do that? Why would he go through all that to be able to save us? Um, because that is, his, that is his intention, to save us. And how did he do that? By ransoming us by his own blood. He offered himself as the lamb of it, the eternal lamb of sacrifice so that we may be saved. And he made us into a kingdom. That's, that part's important and beautiful. By offering his blood as the prince, as the son of God, he not only bought us our freedom, our salvation, but he restored us. And in doing so, he gave us his royal blood. Now, it's a very graphic image, but it makes perfect sense. By offering his own blood, and he is a divine, he is divine, he is the son of God, he gave us his own royal blood, and therefore we are now royals too. We share in his kingship because now we are fully united as children of the king, all part of one family. That's why we share in the kingship of Jesus as Christians, that is part of our baptism, that we share in his royalty, in his kingship, because he made us fully children of God, the Father, the King. And he made us priests. This is very important because in the Old Testament, only the priest had access to God. Only the priest could enter the temple. Only the priest could enter the Holy of Holies where God supposedly dwells. So now, by Jesus' sacrifice, everyone is, be- is made priest because everyone now has equal access to God. That is our common priesthood. I am a priest. I have an ordained priesthood which is different in terms of ministry. But all of us, all Christians, we all have a common priesthood, the priesthood of all believers, because it is no longer exclusive. All of us can go directly to the Father. We don't have to go through the the high priest like in the Old Testament, like in the time before Jesus. So he made us royal and he made us priests so the next verse uses uh the ot the old testament imagery as in daniel no he is coming amid the clouds and every eye will see him this is uh, uh like a throwback to how the prophets in the old testament would see the coming of the messiah and the end time and by recalling the past by using old images It is also a subtle reminder that God has always been faithful. Throughout all this history that we have, all this time that we have been relating with God, God has always been faithful. So if God was faithful before, then we can trust securely that God will be faithful to his promises until the end. And this is actually the central thesis of John in the entire book of Revelation, that we have a right to believe without any doubt that Jesus will triumphantly return, that this is sure. We can assume it. We don't have to um, wait with bated breath as if to wonder, is he coming or is he not coming? No, we can trust without fail because this God has, been all, has always been faithful. Therefore, we can also trust that he will, he will fulfill what he promised to us. And we, and we just have to believe and have faith. And that fills us with hope. So to Christians, this final return is hope. Because what we look forward to is the ultimate victory of God, of goodness, of truth, of beauty. That is sure, 
As I always say, this is not a telenovela or a Netflix series where you don't know how things will turn out. You are, you know, you have cliffhangers and you don't know what's the ending. But when it comes to our journey, uh, what all of this is coming towards, we can be sure that at the end of all this, God wins. And that gives us hope. And that also scares the people who are against God, who wants to live against his will, because that is threatening, because you know that you will not win in the end, no matter the machinations, no matter what evil schemes you have, God will still win. And if you are, if you don't want to follow God, then that will make you scared and hopefully make you rethink your stand. And the last part of this verse is written in Greek and Hebrew, but both words mean yes or amen. So be it. Greek is nigh and amen is from Hebrew. And as in the Bible, as is always the case in the Bible, repetition is meant to emphasize. And by the use of two biblical languages, I'm sorry, my slides have so many typological typographical errors, but uh, the repetition in two biblical languages underscore how true these promises are. Uh, it is like emphasizing, overemphasizing that yes, all of this will happen. We know it and we look forward to it. And finally, we have verse 8. And it says that I am the, that the Lord God is the Alpha and the Omega. The first and last letters of the Greek alphabet is Alpha and Omega. It indicates absolute completeness that everything from the beginning up to the end and everything in between, God has it all covered. And it also implies his lordship over time. That from the beginning of time until the end of time, and even now, God is in control. He is not, um, you know, we are not being toyed with, but God knows and ex- exactly where all of this is headed. And we will, we will get there. That's why he is truly almighty. No? In, in Greek, pantokrator. He is the only one who truly deserves the title almighty. Because he is absolutely complete, absolutely in control, and nothing, no amount of scheming or uh, planning or evil and sin could dislodge God from his throne. He is truly almighty. So, putting all these readings together in view of our solemnity of Christ the King, all of this underline the essential truth that everything is in God's mighty hand. Nothing is lost to him. He knows the number of the hairs in our head. He knows everything that's going on in the universe. He is king and Lord over all of it, both in time and in space. There is nothing that God has not covered. So, Imagine, let's go back to the gospel passage, the gospel scene. Imagine you are Pilate and you are facing Jesus, who is the king. No wonder then that it is Pilate who felt that he was on trial because he sensed it, even though Jesus looked like he was beat, he, was, he looked like a defeated man, but he sensed. And the more he talked to him, to Jesus, the more he confirmed this instinct that this guy is different. He is totally in control. I am the one who is uh, grasping at straws here. I don't know what's going on, but this guy seems to understand perfectly what's going on. Uh, But because of Jesus' unique kingship, born of loving sacrifice, whose almighty power is directly from his total surrender, Jesus is also telling us that you do not have to fear. That this king, this guy who is in control of everything, is 
not out to get us. It's not out to judge us or to make us suffer or condemn us. Because by the sacrifice of this king, of himself, by shedding his own blood and by making the cross his throne, he is telling us that I love you. Okay? I am your king and I love you completely. So you do not have to fear because the one in control actually wants you to succeed. He's actually sharing his kingship with you. His desire is perfect union with you. And he has done everything in his power short of um, um, transgressing our personal will and freedom, but everything else that he can do to bring us back to him, he has done it. Well, it to put it into an image, this is a God, this is a king who, to be able to unite us to him, brought his kingdom down to earth, who opened the gates, who announced, like there's a speaker or someone announcing, hey, this kingdom is open for all of you. And not only that, he actually opened the gates and laid a path so we can know how to get there. But he wasn't even content with that. He, the king who is totally in love with us, didn't just sit there and with open arms say, welcome. No, the king went out of the gate through the path to you so that he can bring you back to the kingdom so that he can guide you every step of the way. That is the king we have. It's something incredibly inspiring, and I hope fill us, fills us with hope. So to end our exegesis part, uh, I'd like to offer some reflection questions. So first, how does Jesus' kingship make me feel? No, Make an, an honest examination of how this truth sits with you. And let that, well, there's no right or wrong, but let that show you where you are in your journey of faith. Are you completely okay with that? That Jesus is totally and absolutely king? Or is there some part of you that is uneasy? That there's some part of you that is not ready to face the king? Because if you are completely ready to face the king, then good for you. But are you actually there? Are you actually at that point? That you are fully comfortable with saying that, yes, Jesus, you are my king. I can surrender absolutely everything, leave nothing at the table, and just let you take over. Just think about that. And then number two, reflect on Jesus' unwavering witness to the truth. Again, one uh, interesting detail about the, the passage is that Jesus never lied. He didn't deny himself. He defended himself without making up stuff. So can we also do that? Can I confidently stand on and live by the truth? Even if it's impractical or uncomfortable for us, are we able to stand on the truth like Jesus and therefore draw power from it. Jesus exuded power to Pilate because he knew the truth and he stood on it without wavering. No, That's why he had this strong sense of majesty, of being in control. And finally, what does Jesus' kingship say about how we relate to power? So... This is a very important um, truth that Jesus shows us about how our understanding of power is broken and crooked. That true power only lies in surrendering to the one who actually has power, to the one who is actually in control. 
that the more we try to grab power from God because we want to be in control of our own lives, the more we are weakened, the more we feel that we are lost. And also, as a side question, especially since we are in election season, how does does the image or the title of Jesus as king and how he is king, how does that influence how we look at our leaders and how we choose our leaders? So thank you very much. That is our exegesis for the Solemnity of Christ the King for this Sunday. Thank you so much, um, Father Albert. Very, uh, very teacher, <laughs> right? Rina, yung approach to Father Albert. And uh, actually, Father Albert, I ha- I do have uh, an answer to one of your questions, if I may. <laughs> yeah, I-, I I think Father Albert, I'll choose number three now. So for me, again, f- friends, this is just me. Uh, um. Whenever I hear the word King uh, Father Albert, I always uh, relate it to abuse of power, mm. of slavery, you know, slavery because of, uh, you know, people have to serve that king. But in co- contrary to the kingship of Jesus, definitely there's no abuse of power, just mm-hmm. like what some of our leaders do who consider themselves as king, which is very inappropriate. And also, There are no slaves because everyone is loved by God. Everyone is the son of, of Christ himself, right? So that's how I would like to compare, you know, the kingship of Christ versus the, the kings, quote-unquote kings, that we have these days. So let's vote. <laughs> All right, vote enough twice. of that topic. Yeah. How about you, Vina? I, like to answer. <laughs> But I won't go there. I won't go there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so teacher me, Mina. <laughs> teacher Mina. So for me, the first question, no, it really bugged me in. So how does Jesus' kingship makes me feel? So it's all about emotion. For me, because when I heard kingship, I feel like someone is above me. And I could say na at first, before, when, when I'm really trying to go deeper, I, I sense this feeling of humbleness that I need to surrender to Christ, to the kingship. kingship of Christ and how this powerful truth sits with me at first it is very painful kasi human behavior talaga is really ako yung mas powerful something like that I can be in control but this time I re- when you surrender to God and obey His will mas ano eh mas smooth yung mga bagay-bagay right Dean? So it really I agree I agree Vina It really gives me that deep sense of um, asking God, how can I go deeper into this journey of faith? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So thank you for that, Vina. And also thank you, Father Albert, for Boy. your um, uh, comeback exegesis. So friends, if you also would like to answer some of the questions of Father Albert or you have questions or clarifications about his exegesis or if you also have questions about faith, about religion that you wish really to, to be answered this evening, no? As, as per Father Bob, they want it to be crazy, to be insane. Friends, go ahead. Comment it down. Comment. Ask them. Uh, we'll, we'll have it uh, later on. So, uh, again, thank you, Father Albert, and uh, welcome home here in Father Michael Laborius Kubiak, Konia. Vina? Yes, and of course, we missed this. We missed him last week. <laughs> we missed him. So, for our big message for tonight, may I call on our uh, spiritual advisor, Father Bob McConaughey. Hi, Father Bob! Hi, Father Bob! How are you doing, doing? Father Bob? Uh, We missed you last week. Tagalog. Uh, yeah. new, new language from Father Bob. He keeps on surprising us every week. <laughs> keep you on your toes. Just to keep you on your toes. Welcome back, Father Albert. I did not know that you went to the East Coast, and I will be driving past... On the Veranzano Narrows Bridge, I'll be driving past Staten Island in a week from Monday. So I will wave to Staten Island as I go by. Welcome, welcome back. Delighted to have you. As always, tonight, your exegesis was point on, really was. And also to Didoy, Brother Didoy, uh, his sharing tonight really kind of integrates a little bit what I'm going to share with you tonight. And when I'm back home on December 2nd, I'm going to speak about what 
was challenged to us to do by Dr. Dr. Dieter, how really to be alone with God. But I want to share with you a true story to make a simple point. It was December 24th, 1974. I would be ordained February 8th, 1975. I was deacon for a year at the cathedral in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And there were three assistant pastors and a pastor. And, and I got to learn how to visit hospitals and, 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 and how to be among people. And it was really a wonderful experience. And I was really, really joyous the night of the 24th of December. And the reason why is because the, the priests were hearing confessions for three hours. I just had a chance to kind of relax. I wouldn't be preaching on Christmas. The fathers would be. And then they came back and we began to have dinner and we were laughing and enjoying ourselves. And then a call came in from the hospital. The hospital is only block away. We were chaplains for Allentown Hospital. And they said, uh, it's a preemie. Now this was much, much later at night. This was about 10 p.m. that we sat down and we're having dinner. And I said, I can take that call. You guys have been busy all day. It's a preemie, that means premature baby. We always get called over to do a baptism. And since I'm a deacon, I can do the baptism. So I said, I'll be back in 20 minutes. And so off I went to Allentown Hospital, got into the elevator, went up to the fifth floor, the maternity ward, and I went in. And the nurse said, you'd better hurry. I said, what, you'd better hurry. And they put, you know, the gown on me and a face mask back then and gloves, and they handed me some purified water so that there would be no, no nothing in it that would hurt, harm the child. And they said, come this way. And here was this little boy, who had just been born a little bit premature. And I remember what I said. I said, I said to the, what, what's his name? Well, we, we don't know yet. We didn't get a chance to ask because this is kind of like, almost like an intensive care unit for babies. They said, we don't know. I said, well, okay. Welcome to our world. I baptize you, Joseph in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I knew that they could easily change that name or they could keep that name if they wanted to. I stood there and, and I was looking at the child after I baptized him and suddenly the child looked different. I had not seen too many people nor been with too many people in that year that had died. And I said to the nurse, there's something wrong here what's wrong? She said, right after you did the baptism, the baby died. This is Christmas Eve. Babies don't die on Christmas Eve in hospitals. And then the nurse said to me, the father is out in the waiting room. Would you inform him? Oh my God, how am I going to do this? And all I remember is I said a prayer to the Holy Spirit saying, I don't know what to say. How am I going to do this? Please be there with me, Holy Spirit. I got out of the gown and took off the mask and the gloves, and I put my jacket back on and went out into the waiting room, and there was only one person there, and it was the father. And as soon as I came in, the father stood up. He, he looked at me and said, Bob McConaughey? And I said, yeah. He said, Joseph Marin, I sat behind you in homeroom. He had a beard, so I really didn't recognize him right away. I'm sorry, Joseph Maris was his name. And I went over, I said, yeah, Joe. He said, how have you been? Now you're gonna be a priest, huh? I said, yes. He said, guess what? He said, my wife just had a son. I said, I know. I said, unfortunately, Joe is, his lungs were not developed, and he was unable to breathe. I baptized him right before God took him home. And I said, I baptized him not knowing what you wanted to call him. So I baptized him Joseph. His name was Joseph. And he said, would you come down to my wife's room with me? And I remember going down to the room. And I remember there was just a light, like one of those tensor reading lights over her face. 
she had already been told. And they asked me to pray over them. No one had ever asked me before that time to pray over them. To this day, I don't remember what I prayed, but I promised I would be with them for the burial. I went back outside and it was snowing lightly. On my over, way over, people were already making their way to church and wishing me a Merry Christmas. And on the way back, nothing had changed. People were still coming up and saying, Merry Christmas, Deacon Bob. And I remember I got back to church just on time. The bishop was there. I would be his deacon that night. And I vested for mass, but inside, I was just so, so confused. Why would this happen on Christmas Eve? And then, of course, the cathedral choir on our way up the aisle is, is saying, you know, or they're, they're actually singing, Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. I felt anything like joyful or triumphant. And I remember well the reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I had heard it many times on Christmas Eve and many times since. And whenever I hear that on Christmas Eve, I remember 1974. Because the lines from Isaiah that night at midnight are, the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who walked in the land of gloom, a child is born to them. A light has shone. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And all I could feel inside was, but he was taken away on Christmas Eve. And tears were just coming out of my eyes and I couldn't wipe them away. I'm right next to the bishop. But I remember during that whole mass, it felt like anything but Christmas, anything but Christmas Eve. I would be ordained, as I said, in February, and I would go on retreat. And on the retreat, it wasn't a preached retreat. It was the kind of retreat that Dr. Dwight Dedoy kind of describes when he said, I had to get away from everyone and just be alone with the Lord. And on this kind of retreat, you're really alone with the Lord. There's not much interaction with people. And in the silence, the grace suddenly occurred to me. The theologian Karl Rahner says, we always experience grace in retrospect, in looking back. And what I discovered is that even though that child lived about a half hour, but that child's life had meaning. God had a plan for that child's existence for 30 minutes. And that was to teach me that there's no such thing as a life that is meaningless. And secondly, he taught me how to break the news of a death to parents for I would have to do that only six months later when twins were in an automobile accident and one of them died instantly and the others survived. And the state police said, would you go and tell the mother she's working at a factory? Had I not met Joseph on Christmas Eve, I don't think I would have known how to do that. But since I had met him, and was with him for such a short time, and he was in this world for such a short time, it taught me this beautiful truth. If Joseph had died and there was no Christmas, there would be nothing but meaninglessness and tragedy to his life. But because Jesus was born on Christmas, God made man, I discovered the meaning of his life, Joseph's life. I think this Christmas Eve, he will have been 47 years old, but I don't question what he would have accomplished if he lived till 47, because God had him complete his mission on Christmas Eve. And when you were baptized, and he was alive when I baptized him, he immediately became a member of the family. 
the family of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and was hope taken home to be with that family. And Joseph and his wife will be reunited with him one day in heaven because there was a Christmas. So sometimes the meaning of hope is always about the future. Sometimes it's lived in darkness, but as we say in Isaiah, a light has shown. A child has been born for us. A son has been given to us. Christ the Lord. Thank you. Wow. That is very beautiful, uh, Father Bob. I, I felt just by listening to you, Father Bob, imagine that happened 47 years ago. But the way you tell it, Father Bob, it, it seems like it just happened earlier today. Um, yeah, uh, I, I have no words. Um, I just felt, you know, the, how, how, how baby Joseph has impacted your life, Father Bob, with the way you, you know, to tell that story, to tell that indeed it was a blessing during that moment in your life, Father Bob. Yeah. Uh, Vina. And, and I've, I've told that story on retreats at different parishes mm. over the years. Maybe I've told that story about 20 times mm. uh, in different circumstances. And you're right. You, you, you put your finger on the pulse of it. When I was sharing it with you in my mind's eye, I was in that, I was in that neonatal intensive care board. In my mind's eye, I could see Joseph, you know, the father. And I remember specifically that light that was over you know, like a, a lamp light over the, the face of his wife as we prayed together. <clears throat> You're right. It's like it happened yesterday. Yeah. Thank you, Father Bob. Dina? I was really reminded while Father Bob was uh, sharing his story, you know, that how we really appreciate life and how mm. we see uh, life and death, that it really gives us hope and really to appreciate true. Um, how God has given us to us, how Jesus saved us. Yeah. Yes, uh, beautiful uh, message, brothers and sisters, from that miracle story from, from Father Bob. I hope we also get to experience that. Those, Of course, we all do experience miracles every day, but we hope to have that same experience as, as, as what you did, uh, Father Bob, that same impact that it, it lasted for that long time. You know what? In 2022, when all is new, when we get back to PICC yeah. or we're ever going to be with live feasts, mm -hmm. this last two years has not been meaningless. You know, secularly, it is meaningless. Correct. But from our point of view, it's very meaningful. When you look deeper as to what happened among people who became heroic, who became closer to the Lord as a result. When people look back on this, they're going to tell their grandchildren about yes. it. They're going to say how they experienced it and how God showed his plan for their individual lives as a result of it. And, and, and in the same way as, as Joey, you know, I look back and I remember, jo Joseph, you're going to look back and remember this time yes. vividly and you can never be the same again. That's correct, Father Rob. It's all about um, looking things at, from a different perspective, right? Thank you, Father Bob, again. And friends, if you're also blessed by that miracles, beautiful miracle story from Father Bob, you can also share with us uh, via the comment section of Facebook Live. And also, again, friends, if uh, you have these questions or, of course, realizations about um, everything here in Father Michael Aguardas Bibliotonia, Come on and uh, share it with us uh, using the Facebook comment section of uh, Facebook Live. And so, Vina, um, I believe we have uh, started to receive a lot of questions, both about the exegesis and uh, anything about Catholic faith this evening. So, um, Father Bob, uh, joining you is, of course, Father Albert and, of course, our friend here in uh, Rivia Conia, Brother Kaloy. Good evening, Brother Kaloy. Kamusta kayo? Mabuting, mabuti. <laughs> mabuting, mabuti. <laughs> All right. So, Brother Kaloy, Father Bob, and Father Albert, uh, three gentlemen this evening, brothers and sisters, who will be answering those crazy, those insane, those tough questions <laughs> coming <laughs> coming from you, for, uh, brothers and sisters. So, Vina, um, I will... Mm -hmm. we'll, yeah. We have these uh, questions, no? 
Crazy daw eh. So, yeah. Crazy. So, Welcome back. You, Father Bob asked this. Uh, asked the questions to be crazy. So, we'll give you crazy questions, Father Bob. <laughs> so, uh, For well, first... first question... Yeah, uh, Vina. We'll would you like to give the first test. question? Yeah, sure, yeah. Vina. Go ahead. Our random, random thing. <laughs> yeah. So, first question that I want to ask... Go, go ahead. Answer, is that every belief is basically often transferred as it is. So... This talks about the gospel earlier. So uh, it was also mentioned about superstitious beliefs, Al- Father Albert. No? So does this mean that those who believe in superstitious beliefs don't have faith? I'm processing the question. Sorry. <laughs> um, or, maybe, or maybe, Father Albert, V, now you would like to give uh, a sample. <laughs> superstitious belief that you used to believe in or maybe still believe in right now? <laughs> oh, sample. So, when, uh, Father Albert mentioned that if you like see a black cat, like mamalasen ka or something bad will happen to you. So, yeah. does, does that mean that if we believe on that superstitious belief, we don't have mm-hmm. faith or I don't know. Yeah. Well, you can't say that you don't have faith. But you gotta ask yourself why you're letting your life be governed by things that, you know, are not part of the faith, are not even based on anything that we believe in as Catholics. So, because people like to say, "Wala namang mawala, nothing will be lost if I, if I follow it. It's just a precaution." But if you keep doing that and you live, it, it starts to influence how you live your life. Then there's gotta be a problem there somewhere. I think. That's my quick, uh, short answer to that. Thank you, Father. Probably Albert. alluded to it a little bit earlier too when you talked about the Alpha and o- Omega. Everything mm-hmm. is under God's control. He's going to bring good out of it. So you know, to one of the things we're really called upon is is, is to unlink ourselves with some of the things that we may have been brought up with, with some of the the uh, superstitions that have kind of Kind of formulated our brain here a little bit and say, Lord, give me the grace to let go of superstitions. You know, it, it would be a grace to do that and simply ask for that grace. Do you have lesser faith? You can't quantify faith, right? Mm-hmm. But you can qualify it. And, and, and to say, I really put full trust in God that he's going to protect me this day. I don't have to worry about, you know, stepping on sidewalks. It can be a little bit neurotic as they not erotic, Neurotic, neurotic. To, to, to hold on to, to superstition because it's saying somehow I want to be able to control things. And yeah. Father made it very, very clear that the more we try to control, control things, the less God can give us the grace we need to be in control. That's so my, my answer to that would be is to pray for the grace of letting go, of mm-hmm. detachment from superstition. Detachment from superstition, Thank you, Father Bob. Um, Brother Kaloy. Perhaps uh, there are people who have not been enlightened yet. That's why they have this kind of superstitious beliefs. So if you have already been taught, if you have already been told, just for instance, tonight we have learned a lot from the exegesis given by Father Albert. We know that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is king. And uh, the Alpha and the Omega. So if he is in control of everything, then we should not believe that uh, a black cat would control our destiny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it also depends on the superstitions that uh, you believe on. Because there are superstitious, superstitious beliefs that are practical. Uh, for instance, uh, we believe we Filipinos believe that uh, it is not good to cry over the coffin of our loved one during the wake. Mm-hmm. And we are told not to do that. And that's very practical because uh, if you cry over the coffin, you know, when the tears drop on the glass, it's difficult to clean. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's difficult to clean. And uh, uh, superstitious beliefs like uh, you don't say goodbye to those who attended the wake, that's also practical. 
because uh, instead of of uh, extending our cons uh, our condolences to the bereaved family, uh, it would be an extra effort for them to bring all the visitors out, you know, to accompany them uh, towards the door of the mm. funeral parlor. So there are some that are actually practical. But mm. if they are beliefs that are against our faith and we have already been taught about it, then uh, it is uh, something that is already questionable. Correct, correct. So that's right, Brother Kaloy. No? Uh, there may be some beliefs that are superstitious and uh, there are also um, logical reasons behind them. But as, as per Father Bob and also Father Albert, um, we should have we should detach ourselves from this, especially if this does no good to us. <laughs> you should not let the black cat control your life for it. <laughs> right? All right. So thank you. Thank you for, for that. Um, thank you, Vina, actually, for that question. <laughs> All right. So let us now proceed to the next question, um, still about exegesis. Since uh, tonight, well, we spoke about Christ as the King. So Father Albert, Father Bob, and uh, also Brother Kaloy. When we talk about monarchy, the king, the king and the queen are spouses, right? Husband and wife. Now in heaven, if Christ is the king, now, why is Mary, his mother, the queen? Well, I, I, I think the, the, the kind of things are, you know, I has not seen or is here. Or we kind of project our experience on this earth mm -hmm. and our practices of king and queen, et cetera, et cetera, as if heaven has to reflect that. And yeah. it doesn't. All right. All we know is the beautiful truth that Jesus has been is not only king of heaven, he's king of the whole universe, king of heaven and of all earth. Okay. All right. And secondly, that it is a dogma of our church, all right, that mm -hmm. Our Lady uh, was assumed into heaven and she received the title, you know, queen of heaven. So it's not like they have to be married. That's that's mm -hmm. very secular. And, and yes. it's, it, it's saying, well, how come? It's that way when it's not that way here. <laughs> and the yeah. answer is kind of obvious, I think. All right. Makes sense, Father Bob. Uh, would you like to add on that, uh, Father Albert or Brother Kaloy? Um, no, for me, it, Father Bob really made an excellent point. Now, how our human language and our human experiences really fall short of really capturing many divine truths. Uh, we are limited in that way because that is our experience. That is part of our being. Mm. But we don't. We should not fall into the trap of like uh, equating our concepts with how yes. it is, how it really is, and especially in for things that are in heaven or beyond our physical mortal experiences. Yeah, basically what Father Bob said: <laughs> <laughs> divine truth beyond mm. our comprehension, right? Mm. Uh, Brother Kaloy, last week. Yeah, yeah. As we have learned from uh, the exegesis that was said uh, even by Father Albert earlier, our Lord Jesus Christ is not the political king uh, that uh, we uh, have an idea of uh, as we have experienced the kind of thing that we have here on earth. So the kingship and uh, the kind of king our Lord Jesus Christ is, is very different. But actually, even uh, if you would uh, try to look into our experience here on earth, uh, actually a king who is a son can uh, exist as a king while there is a queen who is a mother, uh, the queen uh, dowager. Uh, right now, I'm watching uh, a Korean uh, series, uh, The King's Affection. And uh, actually, the queen is the mother. All right. And, uh, so it's the sun. Mm. So why not? Okay. <laughs> but again, but again, our the the kind of king that our Lord Jesus Christ is not the political king. The political king. Correct. Yes. Thank you, thank you, brother Kaloy, for that um 
K-drama <laughs> reference as well <laughs> to support uh, your point. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kalayan, Fathers, Bob and Albert. All right. Uh, next question, Vina. Yeah. So we have here one question from our viewers. So, sabi niya, good evening and welcome back, Father Albert and Father Bob. Just curious, if it was the Roman Empire that persecuted and later crucified Jesus, why is the religion now called Roman Catholic? Maybe I was absent during my history class back then. So it would be great for us to have a quick refresher. From uh, Rafi Madwen. Hello, Brother Rafi. Um, who wants to answer first? Um, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> um, well, uh, hmm. uh, the Roman in our in our church is based on the fact that our uh, we the church in Rome, the diocese of the bishop of Rome, is the head of our church. Uh, it's not in any way um, because it's not you know the same thing. Uh, but it is like a, a nice twist of fate that the same empire, you know, again, this is how God works, you know, that the same empire that subdued the people of God, that uh, perse- uh, that by whose power the, the Son of God was crucified and, you know, lay, uh, killed, is, not, is, is then the one that adapts the Christian faith and becomes the center of the Catholic Church. So... That's, that's, that's just how history turned out, no? But it's not. We don't uh, count it against uh, na bakit Roman Empire, <laughs> Roman Catholic Church. Tayo. It's simply because of the Church of Rome, which is where uh, the the Pope, the head of that uh, diocese of the Bishop of Rome, is our head, no? In the College of Bishops. Thank you, Father Albert, Father Bob, or Brother Carlos, Caloy, Brother Caloy. <laughs> Again, it is uh, to put emphasis that uh, the seat of our church is in Rome. Mm-hmm. And uh, we hold dearly to this uh, part of our faith because uh, in Matthew 16, the keys of the kingdom of heaven were entrusted to St. Peter. Saint Peter. And yes, and uh, we all know that Peter was really chosen by our Lord Jesus Christ to become his... Uh, visible representative uh, to be the leader of the apostles and uh, the head of the church. Uh, And uh, we all know that uh, Peter went to Rome. He preached there and it is where he died. And uh, even when all the apostles were already gone and it was only St. John who was left uh, alive, was still alive, all the bishops would still uh, consult the bishop of Rome, uh, uh, acknowledging, knowing that the bishop of Rome, uh, whoever is the uh, the one who succeeds Peter, is the head of the church. So that's that's why we uh, we still have uh, the name Roman. Catholic Church, uh, putting emphasis on uh, on that. But actually, we are very much uh, thankful to the Roman Empire because it is not only the Roman Empire that uh, uh, gave the 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 execution or the sentence, the death sentence to our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks to the Roman Empire, they have built roads, and it the roads actually. Uh, uh, helped uh, the apostles in spreading the good news to preach uh, uh, to all the other uh, to the other countries all over the world, and uh, it was also the Roman Empire that made the Catholic Church the official religion of of the the empire, <laughs> which actually uh, occupies uh, a great majority of the world at that time. Mm. So it doesn't always have to mean that we are Roman Catholics. We also live in Rome. It doesn't follow that <laughs> that uh, you know that route. Okay, but thank you, thank you for that um, uh, explanation, uh, Brother Kaloy. Father Bob, would you like to add on that? 
how could I add to that? It was yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, uh, Father Albert and Brother Kalai. Now I think, uh, gentlemen, this is going to be our last question for this evening as we expect this to have a uh, deep discussion. So the question is, we all say that man is created under the image and likeness of God. Now, what is the stand of the Roman Catholic Church on minor cosmetic surgery or altering your original face and body? For example, minor nose uh, facelift, uh, nose, what do you call that, bridging, something. Is that something that the Catholic Church is um, weary about or is that okay or unacceptable? Uh, Father, Father Bob? And I really don't know of any official teaching except that, you know, under the fifth commandment, you know, mutilation is not permitted, self-mutilation, all right? So therefore, getting a sex change, for example, uh, mm -hmm. we strongly preach that, you know, even if you get a sex change, all of the cells in your body are still going to have the same, you know, not XX, but XY, all right? You can't change yeah. Y into XX. And so this whole idea of gender theory falls kind of flat in his face. But it would be, you know, kind of changing yourself into by surgery, into that for which you were not created. For if our Lord wanted you created, uh, you to be male or female, that is the way you're created. That's the way it's been, except for the last 15 years. So all of history up until this point really proclaimed the same uh, rather obvious truth. And I don't mean at all to be bigoted here, right? It, 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 it's the idea here that if someone gets this done, they usually have psychological, psychiatric profile to make yeah. sure that they're doing it as far as the medical profession is concerned for good reasons. But from uh, our point of view, from, from a spiritual point of view, God created the male and female, right? In my country, there is a huge move to do away with those pronouns completely <clears throat> and, and, and not call anybody she or he anymore. Uh, that can show you how radicalized something like this can become. Uh, and, 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 and then, you know, it, it really kind of renders meaningless uh, the fact that for thousands of years, everybody simply said the same thing. And it's not a matter of bigotry against anyone. And it's not a matter of that there's millions of people who are, you know, uh, male and female that would wish that the church would allow them to change. Nobody seems to want to except those who have this deep desire to do that. Having a deep desire to do something doesn't necessarily make it right. And, and in our, our uh, understanding... You know, gender theory, theory, okay? It's like critical race theory that they're pushing in the United States. It's rendered rather meaningless when you look at the, at the real truth of things. How someone in conscience does that, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to at all, uh, uh, you know, say anything about their kind. You make a decision in conscience. You believe that what I'm doing is truthful and, and, and right then it's between that person and God. It really is. But in terms of what the church actually teaches and why we teach that has kind of not just the church, but it seems like civilization has been saying the same things for centuries. And now in our enlightened society, we believe that all of that was utterly untrue. And all of that was, was, was banal and, 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 and not very wise. But in the last 15 years, we have somehow found wisdom and one of the ways we find wisdom is to do away with these silly old-fashioned teachings of the Catholic Church and mm. So I, that's my answer to the question. I, and as I say, I don't mean to be bigoted against mm. LGBT <clears throat> nor trans. I, I yeah. have two or three friends that are actually transgender. I do, mm, right? Wow. And, and I do not, when I'm sitting having coffee with them, say, you know, you shouldn't have done that. You know, because I respect their conscience. They know what the church teaches and, and they decided to do this. That's between them and God. But as far as the teaching is concerned, we have to teach the truth. Thank you, Father Bob. Father Albert. 
Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Father Bob uh, said it quite clearly about where we stand in terms of like mm-hmm. those uh, major um, operations mm-hmm. or surgeries. But mm-hmm. as to the question of minor cosmetic surgeries, we really don't have like a fix. Like one, two, three, four, five. Here's where mm-hmm. it's it's okay. Here's where it stops. It's really yeah, more yeah. a question of asking yourself why you want it. What are the motivations yeah. behind it? Um, are you putting too much value on your physical appearance? Because again, the question is about cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. So are you putting too much of your value based on how you look? And what does that say about you know your journey, your growth as a person? Now, again, we will not say, no, don't do that because it's sinful. It's it's question of why and how yeah. and have you discerned and prayed over that. And definitely a priest like me could, could only guide you through that process. We, we don't have any right to say, no, no that's wrong. No, that's yeah. right. We don't have that teaching in the church. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I think a, a matter of wanting, it's usually a matter of wanting to look younger. It really is. <laughs> And it's a hold on Father Bob. You know, you can see I, I could use a facelift here, but then I, <laughs> but I'm too old. I, I don't want to look young anymore. I'm happy uh-huh. with it. But you know, you might say, do I need a facelift or do I need a faith lift? And 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 mm, which, do wow. I need, which do I need more? You know, mm. you're gonna get old. I know that for yeah. a fact. There was a time when people, I would tell them up my age was, was 41, and they say, Mike, you look like you're 29. Now I tell them I'm 74, and they don't say, oh, you look, you look 54. They don't say anything. So I'm promising you, you're going to get old, right? Uh-huh. And you're also going to die. That's going to happen someday. We can put that off with all kinds of ways. Mm-hmm. But believe me, usually when you get cosmetic surgery, People know that they can tell, but they won't tell you. They yeah. won't tell you because they don't want to embarrass you. So just age gracefully. People, age will, people will love you and be attracted to you far more by your humility than yes. by your face. Okay? Yes. Yeah. And finally, Brother Kaloy, your thoughts on this matter, please. As uh, St. Paul said that... Uh, we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God because mm-hmm. uh, our bodies are sacred. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So yes. not that just, not just uh, as you have mentioned earlier, that uh, we are created in the image and likeness image of likeness. God, mm-hmm. but we are the temples of the Holy Spirit, our bodies. That's why we have to take care of it. So uh, any kind of surgery that uh, will be performed on our bodies Mm -hmm. should promote uh, life and should uh, promote health. Mm -hmm. And so it depends on the intention of Mm -hmm. the one who will be going through the procedure. Because health does not only entail uh, physical health, but could also entail psychological health. So if a if a person was uh, burned, uh, for instance, uh, his or her face was burned caused by a fire, then uh, in order to help uh, him go through that uh, psychological effect or devastation that a person is going through because uh, his or her face got ruined, then I don't think there is no problem with cosmetic uh, surgery. It depends on the intention of the person who's going through the procedure. Just yeah. as uh, what Father Albert uh, mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, it could be a question of uh, uh, you just would like to look good or look beautiful. And... Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, it depends on the intention, but uh, intention. that which is important is if it promotes health and life, then mm-hmm. there's nothing uh, wrong about it. Yeah, correct. So basically, uh, get a facelift, right, Father Bob? Because you might no longer need a facelift. <laughs> 
Yeah, so thank you so much, um, dear fathers, Bob, Father Albert, and Brother Kaloy. Um, I understand, Father Albert, you need to leave early. So thank you so much, Father Albert. We will see you next week, <laughs> Father Albert. All right, so friends, we're also done this evening, but uh, Vina, uh, please uh, formally close <laughs> our yeah. show. How do I yeah. say it properly? <laughs> thank you, Father Albert. Thank you, Father Bob. And thank you, Brother Kalay, for answering those uh, crazy questions yes. tonight. Uh-huh. <laughs> and also, may I ask Father Bob if you can lead us into uh, closing prayer. Thank you, Vina. Let us pray. Lord, this has been the year that was, in fact, even the year before that, there has been so much darkness, so much worry, so much fear. But we learn tonight as we come to the end of the year and we celebrate the feast of Christ the King, that because he has triumphed, we still have hope that you will draw good out of this, even though it kind of feels bad at the moment. And we pray that all will be brand new in 2022 when we can all gather again in community, see each other, have coffee with each other. But in the meantime, Lord, let us use these weeks that are going to be leading up to Christmas with the first Sunday of Advent next Sunday. Let us use it this way in in realizing it was said at the end of the movie, The Grinch that sold Christmas, that the Grinch thought and he thought and he thought some more. Perhaps Christmas doesn't come from a store. May this Christmas be one in which we celebrate who we are and who Jesus is, Christ our King, and open our minds and open our hearts and be alone with him so that he might reveal to us our purpose, his plan, our mission. And to that end, may our Lord Jesus be with you to protect you, go before you to guide you. Stand behind you to give you strength and on your journey, walk close to you as I bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Bob, for that wonderful closing prayer. And Dean, we have announcements for tonight. A few announcements before we go. All right. All right. So... If you have still your questions right there, by next week, of course, we will answer that. Don't forget to type in your comments. Yes, we'll see you next week uh, as we're going to reflect. Yeah. Correct. As we're going to reflect, Dina, on the reading, uh, the coming, diba? Kasi mag-a-advet na po. Brothers and sisters still with Father Bob, uh, Father Albert, and of course, um, Brother Kaloy, and the rest of the Bibliogonia family with uh, Brother Edire. And so, next, to all our singles, uh, attendees, or viewers this evening, we are on our um, season two, if I may say, no, our part two of uh, the Love Life online retreat. Yes, that will happen on December 11 to 12, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. via Zoom online po ito. Uh, registration is still open, friends, so if you wish to be blessed no, and uh, meet new people who are also journeying just like you in faith, please do sign up and uh, attend this Love Life Retreat online, Batch 2. Ayan, Batch 2 pala siya. It's not part 2, it's not season 2, it's Batch 2. Shout out to my uh, Love Life Retreat Batch 18 uh, batchmates. Hello there, how are you guys doing? And also, friends, we would like to uh, encourage you to continue in giving by uh, checking out our official Union Bank account. You can also go to www.thefeastmalofasia.com or you can also conveniently send Facebook stars. Thank you so much, friends, for your generosity. And finally, Vina. Also, we would like to invite you to our yeah, hey. most awaited event of the year, Peace Ooh. Conference 2021, which will be online. Our theme this year is Joyful, Joyful. So if you're looking for empowerment, inspiration, Man. friendship, connection, and worship and prayer, of course, mm-hmm. this conference is a must for you to attend. So you may uh, go to www. Uh, as you can see in the peaceconference.com right and the ticket there's a ticket so para baka attend ka you need to yes. pay that 995 lang naman correct mura mura lang but uh, you will uh, be guaranteed with a lot of learning uh, you can also meet new friends because uh, I believe there will be virtual connect groups and of course um, there will be powerful uh, master classes powerful mass and powerful worship from uh, the entire feast 
community worldwide, right? And Dean, so friends, of course, this please will happen uh, uh, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So this is starting tomorrow. Starting this tomorrow will already. November 19, 20, and 21. Yeah. yeah, so friends, again, we invite everyone to register and join this year's Feast Conference online, Joyful Joyful. Just log in to a feastconference.com for more details. All right, friends, uh, there you have it. Thank you so much again for joining us this evening. And thank you so much also for sending in your questions. We promise to have them answered, more of them answered in the coming weeks. Thank you also to you, Father Bob. Welcome back again. Thank you to you, uh, Brother Kaloy, for your uh, very uh, rela- um, practical insights as well to our um, questions uh, as, as always. And so friends, please continue to stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay hopeful. Have a good day and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>